Hey guys, welcome back. In this video, we will talk about another operation on sets. Today, we will discuss an operation on sets called the difference of sets. It's also known by another name called the complement of sets. Let us see what does the definition of difference of two sets tell us. We read this definition as A minus B is defined as that set which consists of the elements x such that x must have this property. What property? x must belong to A and also x must not belong to B. We call this set the difference of A and B. In this definition, you should note few things. First of all, A minus B is nothing but a set. So, once again, A minus B is a set. Second thing, if I have an arbitrary element or member and I want to know whether it belongs to the set A minus B or not, according to the definition, the element X must satisfy this property. What property? X must belong to A and X must also not belong to B. And the members of a set share a common property which we call the defining or the characteristic property. For the difference of two sets, the defining property or the characteristic property is this. X belongs to A and X must also not belong to B. This defining property actually consists of two parts. Pro the first property is X must belong to A and the second property is X must also not belong to B. The question is, what if I have an element and it belongs to A but it also belongs to B? Does this element belong to A minus B? Obviously not because it satisfies just one property that is X belongs to A. In order to be an element of the difference of A minus B, X must satisfy these two pieces of conditions or these two properties. One property is X must be an element of A. Also, X must also not be an element of B. So, this definition tells me that for an element to belong to this A minus B, X must satisfy two properties. One property is X must be an element of A and the second property is X must not belong to the set B. For this difference of two sets, the defining or the characteristic property is this property. X belongs to A and X does not belong to B. You should note one more thing. We denote this difference of two sets this way as well and we read this symbol as complement or relative complement of B with respect to A or complement of B with respect to A and this difference of two sets is also known by another name that is relative complement. Okay. Now, how does the difference of two sets look like when diagrammatically? This is the diagram. Let us suppose that my first set is A and is this circle, okay? And the se second set B is suppose that it is this circle and I want to know how does the difference or complement of B look like when diagrammatically. When definition A minus B consists of all the elements of A such that those elements, those elements do not belong to the set B. This shaded portion represents A minus B or complement of B with respect to A. Here is an example that will brush our teeth to the definition of difference of two sets. Now, let us suppose that I have two sets. My first set is A and it consists of the elements L, M, N, O and P. And my second set is B and it consists of the elements 
N O P J S. And I want to know what is the difference A minus B, or what is the complement of B with respect to A. Let us apply the definition of complement to this very particular example. We know the definition of difference of two sets says us that an element will belong to A minus B if it has two properties. First property is it must belong to A and the second property is it must not belong to B. That is X must not be an element of B. So let's see which elements of A satisfy these two conditions. First of all, let's apply these, this definition to this very particular example. Now, L will be included in A minus B if L belongs to A. Does L belong to A? Obviously, L belongs to A. So, first condition here is satisfied. This is not enough. L must not be an element of B. Does L belong to B? The answer is no. Means that our L satisfies both the conditions. Which conditions? This one and this one. It means that according to definition, L is going to land in A minus B. Similarly, I will apply now the definition to the element M. Does M belong to A? The first condition. The first condition says that M must belong to A. So, obviously M belongs to A. Now, this is not enough. M also must have this property. What property? M must not be an element of B. So, let's check. Does M belong to B? Obviously, it does not belong to B. Means that according to definition, M satisfies both these conditions. Implies that M is going to land in my A minus B. Now, similarly, when I apply the definition to all of these guys, remaining guys, I get this very set. Why I have not included N in this very set? Because N, in order to belong to this very set, N must have two properties. And the properties are, uh, first property is this, and the second property is this. Now, N satisfies this property. But N does not satisfy this property. That is why N does not belong to this very set. Similarly, O does not satisfy these two properties. That is why O is not in my A minus B. Similarly, P also does not satisfy these two properties. Although P satisfies one of these, but in order to land in my A minus B, P must satisfy both of these conditions. That is why A minus B is just equal to L and M. That is, my A minus B consists of just two elements, which are L and M. Here is another very special example. This example will answer us why we need empty set in set theory and in general in mathematics. Consider this particular example. My set is uh, A and it consists of the elements A, B and C. And I want to know what is the difference of A with respect to itself. I mean, what is A minus A? Now, according to the definition of complement or difference of two sets, A will belong to A minus A if A has two properties. Number one, first property, A must belong to the set A. And the second property is that A must not belong to the set A, which is not possible. Now, Clearly, A satisfies first property. What property? A belongs to A. Now, A must also satisfy another property. That is, A must not belong to A, which is not possible. So, A satisfies only one of the two conditions necessary for difference of two sets. So, is A is not going to land in A minus A. Similarly, B will be included A in A minus A if B has the property that B belongs to A and B also does not belong to A, which is not possible, means that B is not going to land in A minus A. Similarly, C is also not going to land in A minus A. Now, obviously, A minus A contains nothing. It is an empty set. It is also known by another name, wide set. Now, whenever such scenarios 
occur in set theory mathematicians name this scenario under the heading of the empty set so what we will what we get here is simply a set which contains nothing and this answers the question why we need the empty sets in set theory in fact there is only one empty set and that is why we use the empty set we never ever use an empty set 